Hello everybody. This video is going to be a little different than the normal video. I'm going to actually face the camera instead of being, you know, looking away from the camera, behind the camera. So I'm basically going to talk about ergonomics and safety. This is something I wanted to talk about in the last video. Um, I kind of hit on a little bit the things that I do to kind of reduce fatigue and chronic injury that PAs that gross every day, all day, for many years uh, face. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. And I'm going to go in order. So let's go top to bottom. So meaning the top of everything. So the top of everything is the lights. Um, the lights in your grossing bay. Um, changing the bulbs. You can change the bulbs out to a brighter bulb. Obviously they dim. They're fluorescent typically. Uh, the newer ones come with these um, LED can lights which are super bright. But they're also adjustable so they can be dimmed slightly if they're too bright. Um, I don't think being too bright is a real problem. I think eye fatigue from not having enough light is a problem. Uh, you can change those uh, one inch, 40 inch uh, standard fluorescent bulbs to LED bulbs, which um, would be really nice. But also don't forget, you can change the diffuser. The, the diffuser is that white plastic piece that's covering the bulbs. You can change that to a clear uh, plastic or even um, um, a less frosted uh, diffuser so it gets more light through. Uh, just some ideas to change the lighting scenario. Uh, of course, chronic injury, uh, exposure to formalin, um, good ventilation is, is key. Um, uh, what's often overlooked with good ventilation is the noise. Um, some of these grossing bays that are old, they get good ventilation, they get good suction, but they're so loud that over a long period of time, you're going to end up hurting your hearing. Um, so finding a good mix of good ventilation and uh, reducing the, um, the, the noise, but also related to ventilation is keep your buckets closed. Um, you'll take out a specimen, a uterus, a colon, uh, a lung, whatever it may be, and, and you leave the top off of the bucket, and it's just sitting there. Now, you got ventilation, you're in your grossing hood, and everything's fine, but just put the lid back on the bucket while you're grossing. This will significantly reduce the amount of um, formalin exposure you have. Um, also, keeping your bucket in the bay, as far back in the bay, close to where the, the suction is, is, is good. Um, also, the, the, the bucket that you put your blocks in, um, uh, we use a little Tupperware container with a rack in it. Uh, keep the lid on that as much as you can. Obviously, you know, you need to leave it open so you can put blocks in, but don't just leave it open and walk away. Um, that kind of stuff can, can add up over the years. Um, a good elevation of the grossing bay. Um, the cutting surface. Um, obviously, my grossing bay goes up and down, so a lot of the newer ones do. If you don't have that, find your sweet spot as far as you're keeping your arms 90 degrees from the cutting surface. Um, I use a 4-inch elevated grossing board, cutting board. Um, it has little 4-inch legs underneath it. It gets it up out of the well of the grossing bay, but then also can elevate uh, the grossing bay itself. So that keeps everything closer to my face yes so exposure to formalin but it's also closer to my eyes so i can see um but it's also less fatigue for my arms and shoulders and back leaning over um, um for a long period of time straining those muscles um so good elevation um so keep supplies in close reach to where you are so if you use something all the time every time blades q-tips inks uh, biopsy bags, um, you name it, you know, paper towels, vinegar, whatever it is that you use on a routine basis, keep it much closer to you. I mean, within close reach, don't, so you don't have to take a step, so you don't have to lean over too far. Things that you use less often need to move further away from you. I mean, it's just kind of common knowledge, but things that people don't think about um, are, are uh, important. And like I said, this isn't about the occasional resident that goes back, you know, once every four days and only do this, does this for the first three years of their residency. This is for those PAs that are out there every day, six plus hours a day, grossing hard every day. Uh, these kind of injuries can really add up over time. Also, with the supplies, you don't need two months worth of biopsy bags, blades, paper towels, and all that kind of stuff in your grossing bay. You're, you're taking up valuable real estate that's limited in your grossing bay. Just use, just have in your bay what you're going to need for mm, a week, a week and a half maybe. 
you know, and then you have to replenish that supply. That way you can have a more variety of things so you're not running to the stock room to grab things. Um, but you're not filled up full of paper towels and blades and other things that, you know, you can't possibly use in a month. Um, you're just taking up valuable space. Also, keeping formalin. I, I, I like to keep a, a cube or a container of formalin with a spigot on it um, for filling up those little things, for topping off things. We get stuff fresh here, um, so I have to put formalin on everything. So I keep a little spigot of formalin inside the bay that's ventilated so that I can top off those small items. But I also keep a large jug of formalin with no spigot on it so I can fill up things that need a lot of formalin, like a big bucket, a big specimen, and I can fill it up fast so I'm not exposing myself over a long period of time waiting for this little spigot to fill up this large bucket. Little things like that. Um, keeping the scale close, the balance. Um, Obviously, my scale is right next to my grossing bay on this little side table I have. Um, some people keep it in their bay. That way you're not having to take too many steps to go get a weight on something. Uh, makes it quick, um, easy, um, and convenient. Um, specimens and waste specimens. So, you know, when I, use, I like using these carts with wheels. That way these, these uh, specimens can, can roam uh, between the accessioner and me. Um, but also I can move the cart closer to me, but if I need more room and I don't need the specimens right there, I can push the cart away. So having carts on wheels is good for a lot of things. It gives you more variety. Um, a trash container. I like a large trash container, really close. I don't want to have to push a lid open, um, walk a step to throw things away. Tr trash is probably the closest thing to me. Trash is just as close to me as the specimens. Um, I think that's very important. And obviously, I don't like putting a lid on my trash can, so I have to change my trash often, which is fine. We have good trash people, and they come and dump it off. Um, but keeping a trash can close and convenient, I think, is very important. So down on to feet, fatigue mats. These are those little foamy compression mats that you stab on. These will significantly help your foot, leg, back, shoulder, everything pain. Um, use these. Um, uh, they will definitely help you. There's different thicknesses. You can get stuff that's, uh, 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 you know, they have little holes in them. I, I like the ones that are smooth. They're easier to clean. Things don't fall into the crevices and you can't get out. So I use the smooth one that I can wipe down, um, but it's still foamy underneath. Um, and it's supposed to be antimicrobial under there, so nothing's going to grow. So foot pedals. So obviously we all use foot pedals when we're dictating. Um, move the foot pedal around. Um, keeping the foot pedal in the same spot, using the same leg to stand on the same foot pedal, you're just setting yourself up for an injury. I like to kind of move my foot pedal, left foot, right foot, um, all that kind of stuff. But also what I'm seeing is a lot of people like to keep their foot pedal when they only dictate when their foot is on the foot pedal. That just doesn't make any sense to me. If you have a setting, which most people do now, where you can actually turn on the dictation with the foot pedal and turn off the dictation with the foot pedal, Turn it on, stand on two feet instead of leaning on one leg while you've got one foot half on the foot pedal. just makes a lot more sense, and it's a lot less injury for your, your body over the time. Obviously, just keep your area clean. I mean, mental, I just hate looking at a dirty grossing bay. You know, even if I'm working on some big nasty, I'll work on big nasty after big nasty, and that's fine. But don't, uh, don't, don't leave a messy area. Um, other things I want to mention, um, take breaks, obviously. I mean, a lot of us are overworked, ask too much, um, uh, put in too many hours. Um, you got to take breaks. You got to sit down. You got to decompress. You got to drink water. Talking all day, dictating, you dehydrate a lot. Um, so take breaks. Stretch, obviously, you know, we've got yoga, um, Pilates, you've got these uh, stretching exercises for your wrists, your back, your legs, your feet, your plantar fasciitis, your, all these things. It's good to stretch and, and, and move your arms around, and get your shoulders back, good posture. Um, um, don't get overworked. Um, obviously, you know, there's all these uh, surveys coming out. How many cases can one person gross? cases are crap. You can't depend on case numbers. It depends on the type of case, how many hours of grossing, what type of cases. 
Um, and when you need help, you got to be willing to ask for help. Okay, so that's all I had for that. Now I'm going to talk about the wearable items, the things that you can actually wear um, to reduce fatigue. Okay, so again, let's stop at the top, start at the top. Microphone headset. Um, most of us are using some sort of headset when we're dictating. Some of us use these little um, microphone booms, which are good. But if you're wearing it, um, wearing it over your ears over time can start to irritate the tops of your ears, particularly if you wear glasses. Like occasionally I wear glasses and the microphone and my glasses on top of my ear kind of really puts a lot of weight down on my ears. So sometimes I'll wear the headset where it wraps around the top of my head so that it's not resting on my ears just to change things up, you know. Uh, the newer version of the headsets that I have, I have the Seinhauser. Um, I'll show you a picture of it, but um, the newer version is actually metal. It's lighter, but it's metal. I actually prefer the the heavier plastic one because the metal. I just don't like having the cold metal on my on my ears. Um, glasses, uh, safety glasses, eye protection. Um, with these things, the the trick is you get what you pay for. Um, you spend a little bit of money, you get a nice pair of safety glasses. Take care of them, keep them clean. Um, but they'll be a whole lot better than those free ones the hospital gives you. Those things don't fit right ever. Uh, the plastic digs into you. Um, it's just not good. So you get what you pay for. I also find that going to some sporting goods store and going to the gun area, the shooting safety glasses are typically the most comfortable. They have more rubber on them, a little bit lighter, um, still protecting you, but um, they're a little bit more expensive. But again, you, you get what you pay for on those. Other things, face shields, splash guards. Um, I typically don't wear face shields unless I'm using the, the bone saw or, you know, a striker saw or something like that. But then there's those portable splash guards. I, I don't like those. I, for some reason, I have trouble seeing through those and managing those. But other people use those, and those are good. Uh, gowns, aprons, jackets. Um, I've used those plastic aprons in the past. They're good. They get a little hot. Um, they're open in the back. Um, what I've been using lately is just a lab coat. Um, it has a little pocket in it, so I put my little headset box in the pocket. Anyway, I've been using that. Um, the problem with those is I feel so wasteful. You know, after I'll do a bunch of placendas, they'll inadvertently be a bunch of blood splatter on the front, and I'll have to throw it away, and I feel, I feel kind of wasteful. So I try to use it as long as I can so I'm not so wasteful. Shoes. Um, in the past, I've used clogs. I've used the Danskins. They're good. Um, they're expensive. They last a long time. And they put your foot in the more appropriate position for standing um, and walking. What I've been doing lately is I've been using tennis shoes because I like to be able to move around quicker with rubber-soled shoes that are more secure with the footing. Uh, I just don't like walking in the clogs. They, I just feel awkward because of the, the high heel. Um, um, also related to shoes, um, I, you, using orthopedic inserts, rigid inserts, keeping the uh, arch of your foot elevated is good if you're using tennis shoes, which I, I typically do. I have these little uh, carbon fibered uh, inserts that go in the shoe that keep my foot elevated, kind of keep my foot in the proper position. But I've also been using compression socks if I have a very, very busy day and I know I'm going to be on my feet most of the day. I'll use compression socks and this tends to help my leg fatigue o over time. Um, use a chair if you can. Um, I, I typically don't use a chair unless I'm looking for lymph nodes or something like that. Um, ch uh, the chair kind of gets in my way and standing up and sitting down in a chair typically uses more energy for me than just standing up. So I'll pull out a chair if I know I'm going to just going to sit down and look for some lymph nodes or sit down and do something right in front of me for a while and I won't need to do too much moving around. I'll use a chair. Um, I actually modified a chair. It's an old office chair that goes super high, so I don't have to move my grossing bay to use it. Um, but I took the back off of it, but it's padded and it's not um, it's not hard on my bum. Um, I use baby powder on my hands. Um, t I'm in uh, South Texas humid heat a lot, so uh, hands get a little sticky. And putting on gloves with a moist hand is not a fun thing. Um, wrist support uh, so i have these little gloves that in if you open a ton of biopsy containers over a long period of time you're going to get hand fatigue because some of these people that crank down on these biopsy containers they must be you know 
Dwayne Johnson in there cranking down these biopsy containers, getting those things off is a pain. And doing it over years and days um, can really add up to a lot of wrist and, and hand fatigue. So you have these wrist um, protectors. And also there are some devices out there to help you take um, lids off of containers, which can, can, can be helpful, uh, uh, at least a nice option. So one of the things I want to hit on is don't be afraid of making change. A lot of people, I'll go and work at a place and I'm like, okay, why is your scale on the other side of the room? Oh, well, that's where it's always been. That makes no sense to me. Move it. Move it so it's convenient. Change your grossing bay. Change your lighting. Change your, uh, your, your mats, your fatigue mats. Those things don't last forever. They stop working. Change them out. Um, look at things that you can change in your grossing room to make things more usable. Now, it will take some change. The techs won't like it. The pathologist may not like it. This is about you. This is about your comfort. This is about you completing your job. Um, don't be afraid to make some changes. Just because it's never been done does not mean it's wrong. And so, you know, that's where I wanted to leave off. And, you know, how long do PAs actually gross? I mean, obviously, a lot of us go into manager, supervisor, administration, even some IT people. Um, I've even seen some people go into sales, and they work for these uh, vendors going around selling, you know, equipment and services to, uh, to, to labs. So how long are you willing to go in and continue to gross? I mean, I know some people who've been doing this for 40 years, and they're still grossing. Uh, you know, that's not common. A lot of us kind of get out of doing this just because your body just wears out from the standing all day, every day. Um, and so that's all I had for now on that. If you have any questions, please comment. I'm going to try and do better with my videos um, and give you more content. Um, obviously, right now we're in the middle of this COVID-19 situation. We don't have a lot of grossing to do. But... Um, I want to get into doing more videos. Um, this is a newer place. It's a little bit busier than my old place. Um, right now we're slow, so I'm doing this video. So if you have any questions or comments or things you want to discuss, please let me know. Mm -hmm.